what's in your mind for you and for I. I'm trying to decide when look in your eyes, yeah, yeah. I mean, besides, but your feelings inside you. I'm pressing yeah, we go on episode six on a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up. Episode six, again? baby. Let's get I it. I like it. What's happening, brother? What's up, bro? What's good? What's good? What's happening in your life? Tell us. You know, we, we always get into it and talk about all the shit. What's going on in Ryan Ramirez's life? You know exactly what's going on in my life, dog. We're together every I day. I am your di- Ryan. Please. <laughs> I don't um, know who this guy is. What? We're still in qu- quarantine, I guess. I mean, not really. Man, fuck that shit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I mean, we, we wear our masks. We do our part. It's the same thing, man. It's just music, working on stuff, talking with what we're doing. I'll talk to my friends here and there, my family. Pet Raya, my dog, oh, right. and um, it was International Dog Day yesterday. It was That's sweet. She she got a feature on my page. Right? I feel like people only know the days, like the international days, because like of Twitter and like people online they see yeah. other people doing it. Like, cause I would have never known that yeah. was International Dog Day. Well, here here's the thing. I was researching. I think for I was doing like um, when I was in Sorel's class. I was doing. I was working with this company as a student consultant, and I was trying to figure out stuff for their social media. And I looked up like. There's basically a holiday every day of the year. Oh, whether, really? it, whether it's some shit like ice cream day, the ice cream day, okay. butthole day, whatever the hell it is, butthole licking day. There's a bunch of different things. <laughs> no, but but there's always something. So I was like, dude, that's kind of cool to put into your social strategy. Like, f- like find all 365 days of whatever holidays there are and then just pick the ones that are kind of like cool, relevant to your brand and stuff like that, you know? So they're like set in stone though. Like they're like already in a calendar like for everybody. I, I guess so. Okay. It's I mean, not yeah, like you I'm, can do whatever you want. Yeah, so, no, no, no. I'm sure we could look something up, like, and we could find a list of, you know, international hot dog We're going to do that after. Day. Yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> You're going to see Ryan celebrating international um, hot dogs day. In and out day. Oh. <laughs> day. I guarantee That's there's an day. in and out day. That's every day. That's true. We eat way too yeah. much in and out. Fuck, <laughs> man. Um, lovely listeners, whether you're listening in the car, I, sometimes I got to think about that. Like, where are they? Like, someone could be sitting on a toilet right now with their AirPods in or whatever. They could be laying next to their boo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and doing a Netflix and hanging out or whatever it's called. Whatever you kids They're just call watching it us on the TV, on YouTube, <laughs> just cuddling. That'd be yeah, dope. That would be dope. Hey, new date idea. Hit a girl up or a guy or whatever your preference is, you know, and, uh, get some Chick-fil-A and just watch us. Just this is our challenge for you guys. Yeah, for you guys. New challenge. You don't got to put it on TikTok, Mm-mm. but just post it on your story on Instagram on or Triller. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody use Triller? <laughs> if you use Triller, hit us up on Instagram because Loki, I'm trying to get on Triller. Yeah. I just don't necessarily like understand the platform correctly, I guess. Um, it's, the, it's like similar, but it's just like a different layout and like yeah. the vibe is different. Hey, what is cool about it though is like the way you can make a music video on there. Yes. Yes. That's pretty cool. If you're a music artist, Triller. Mm-hmm. It's dope. It's mm-hmm. dope. Um, I've been listening to this music marketing podcast. Did I send you that one? The manifesto one, or is that, is a that different one? one? No, that's a different one. Okay. But I sent you one. But they were just talking about TikTok and with that trailer that chick and, everything. and the burstimo, like that. Those two people. It's not them. No. Okay. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Whatever. Okay. But, um, Damian yeah. Keys. Damian Keys. <laughs> Shout out Adam Ivy though. Adam Ivy. Adam Ivy. We've been watching all those guys, yeah. man. Literally. Yeah. The, the, We're look, students. The internet is full of so much shit. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I really, if you have a smartphone, I have no sympathy for you. I, I'm mm-hmm. going to be honest. I, if it, so, so, okay, well, let me, let me put a couple of, of, of like givens that I want to put out there because I actually had a conversation with one of my friends the other day and I posted something on social media and she was like, hey, well, what do you think about this, this and that? And we didn't argue, but she was like bringing up points. And I think that people our age especially that have grown up on social media like i remember being you know 15 or whatever and using instagram i've been using instagram for like 10 years Mm -hmm. or whatever um or 13 you know um so i think the worst thing about the great thing about social media to to start off is that you can just bring info immediately to a person we're we're so uh you know accustomed to sound bites and you know 180 character tweets or whatever they are 240 whatever and we're accustomed to these quick swipes Mm -hmm. on instagram and all this shit so it's great because information is fed to us at at an accelerated rate the access to information is just unbelievable and i love that but but everyone has wor- a voice. Well, everyone has a voice, even the fucking idiots, you know, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like, hey, some people think I'm an idiot when I post stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, I guess, you know, it is what it is. Um, I disagree, but anyways, thank you. But what I'm getting at is social media has caused conversation to lose so much nuance and detail. 
right? Because all you're seeing are quick sound bites, quick little sentences, tweets, whatever. You can't have a fully descriptive conversation that has all of the details of what you're trying to talk about in, you know, I don't know what Twitter is. I know I keep fucking it up, but you can't have that detailed conversation in an Instagram post. I'm sorry you can't. Mm-hmm. You can't have a detailed conversation like you would in this podcast long format, you know, as you it, like on Twitter. It's just not possible. So really quick, yeah. really quick. Um but what I wanted to get at, <laughs> like I'm not yeah, even yeah. on the topic we're yeah, supposed yeah. to be on yet. It's all good. But I've been trying to take more of an Okay, so that me being accustomed to social media has caused me, I think in all aspects of my communication except the podcast, which is why I like it, but it's caused me to become less detailed. Mm. So I want to be a more detailed person in terms of the way I communicate. So there's tons and tons of, you know, different details and there's so much nuance to the conversation I want to have. I need to remember that on social media, even if it's like a story post or something. I don't, because look, and especially you as a music artist and Mm -hmm. me representing you, you will get misconstrued but Mm -hmm. we have to mitigate that as much as possible so that's why i love this podcast format because i want to be able to give all the details Mm -hmm. and put all my points up and defend myself and defend others and 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 whatever the conversation you know needs um you were gonna say something i was gonna say um i think you i mean i think you can on instagram i feel like a lot of people will post those super long captions, mm-hmm. like Andy Versella, right? And mm-hmm. he'll have like a super long conversation caption, mm-hmm. and you'll get people like like typing paragraphs as comments and all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. But that's not really the culture of Instagram. Exactly, like, Twitter's that's the culture. Sure, but I think that on you can on Instagram, but it's not really like popular to do that. Yeah, but I, I know what yeah. you're saying. What I was getting at earlier before mm-hmm. I said that, so you know, I wanted to start off with that premise of I'm trying to be more detailed. So here's my statement. I have no sympathy for people with mm-hmm. smartphones. Yeah. Well, let me back that up. What I mean by that is, uh, and to add more detail and to clarify, I don't have sympathy for people who say that they have a huge goal that they want to achieve and they talk and talk about this goal and they have a smartphone and they have a laptop. That If you have a smartphone and a laptop, it means, number one, you've probably got a $1,000 iPhone or Android mm-hmm. or whatever in your pocket. If you have a laptop, you've spent hundreds of dollars, $1,000 on a laptop. It also means you have access to electricity. It also means you have a place where you can charge it, meaning you have a safe place where you can keep your device. So you've got a lot of things afforded to you. Oh, and you have a camera that's better than like a lot of DSLR cameras yeah, in your or, hand. Yeah, or competitive with DSLR or cameras, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so you have all these tools. So I don't have sympathy for you if you're not achieving your goal. If you're one of those people who has an iPhone and you have access mm-hmm. to the internet and we and you've got the same resources as me. I started Density Artist Management with $200 that I took from my financial aid money that I was supposed to use for school. And I said, fuck it, dude, I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to buy a Squarespace website and brand what I'm doing. And I'm going to try to network in the music industry and all that. And of course I had my laptop, which, you know, so I, I, if, if you have all the access to the information on the internet and all these things, tutorials, bro, there are people that run Facebook ads campaigns and they say, hey, download our free 100 page Facebook ads guide or whatever. And, you know, all we need is your email. People are literally giving things mm-hmm. away for fucking free on the internet. If you don't know anything about digital advertising, people create uh, ads funnels, sales funnels, mm-hmm. marketing funnels, whatever you want to call it. And a big thing going on now, especially in social media culture, because millennials and Gen Zers are so... Um, not receptive to traditional methods of advertising. They're tr- people are giving shit away for free. People are giving courses away, yeah. all this stuff for free. So I've got, you know, I'm sorry. If you're sitting here bitching that you're not accomplishing your goal and you have a smartphone, well, I got no well, sympathy it, it, for you. Because here's the problem, dude. Like everything you're saying is completely 100% correct. Okay. The problem is it's not sexy to do, like to put in the work and to gain all the knowledge and to watch a Facebook ads campaign like that's not like sexy dude like people want to post something and blow up and go viral Uh and say that they did it like overnight and shit Mm -hmm. it's not sexy for me to wake up every morning and read two chapters of a success book because it's Mm -hmm. adding to my Mm -hmm. artillery of knowledge Mm -hmm. like all these things are just like they sound like boring things like adult boring things like Mm -hmm. so but at the end of the day like those are the things that propel you into greatness in the Mm -hmm. long run and 10 years from now, you know, the people with all the knowledge who soaked up all that shit, Mm -hmm. put in the consistent work every single day, gain their skills and put all those things together. Mm -hmm. They're going to be on top. And Mm -hmm. all those people who try to do that shit overnight and try to get the get rich quick schemes Mm -hmm. and all Mm -hmm. that quick shit, like, sorry, dude, we we passed you by 10 years ago. Now you got to try to catch up and we're still consistent. So it's Mm -hmm. like, 
there's a whole gap right there. Mm-hmm. So it's like the people who do the unsexy shit every day, like those are the people who win and they come out on top, in my mm-hmm. opinion. But yeah, no, I totally agree. And so, so what I was trying to say with that, and I want to touch on this too. I'm not ignorant to the fact that people are in horrible situations, yeah, and, yeah. There, and there are yeah. people that are like that are adversely affected. 100%. I mean, by you know their parents or their situation, financial situation, where they live, whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's reinforcing my point. But here's it, the thing with not to cut you off, but okay. the thing with that too is like, dude, there are thousands maybe millions Mm -hmm. of people who are successful successful who had it way harder than you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like for us we can't really speak on us because i think we grew up like pretty i want to say well off but like just like we didn't have much to worry about yeah we didn't have much to worry about me and ryan weren't rich as fuck or anything but we had hard-working middle-class parents who were able to make their house payment and put food on the table yeah and we never had like I'm sure, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak for you or anything, yeah. but I don't think we've ever had nights where we're like, where's our next meal going to oh, come? Oh, 100%. We're no, blessed. We're yeah. fucking blessed, oh, we're lucky, you know? for sure. Yeah. So, But a point that, like, a lot of successful people here, I say, <clears throat> um, here say, are, um, there's, I, they're like, I know thousands of other successful people who have it way harder than you if you think it's really hard for you. Mm-hmm. And they made their story, um, inspiring to somebody like you because they had it way harder than you, but they still did it. Mm-hmm. And they did it better than everyone else. So, mm-hmm. like, f- to that, there's still no excuse. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Here, okay, we, dude, we're just going off. I love this. I, I know. Think we, you and we, I we haven't met up in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we caught that stride. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think that you, oh, God, and this is like a, a, a thing that has come up over the last week or two, a couple times mm-hmm. in a couple of situations that I've been in. I think if you want to be successful, you should be a pessimist. Okay. You should say there's someone going harder than me. Uh-huh. There is someone who has it worse than me. Well, I guess that I guess that's being an optimist in that way. There's someone who has it worse than me. I should go harder. Okay. That's you kind of be, being an optimist uh-huh. towards yourself, I guess. Um, but I guess I'm going off on a tangent. So I think that you should never be satisfied if you want to achieve success. And what I mean by Uh being a pessimist is like, um, for example, with my band, we jam and stuff. We, so, so we're, we have a, an Instagram live show on August 31st, right? So we're practicing four songs, three originals and a cover. Mm -hmm. And Terrence was like, Hey man, these sound pretty good. And that was an optimistic outlook. And and I love that. And you have to have that. And I straight turned to him and I was like, no, we could do a thousand times better. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've got lots yeah. of work to do. And, and he agreed to, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying like, you know, we're, we're best friends and creative partners. Mm-hmm. So we have conflicts like that and it's healthy. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is like, I try to adopt the quote unquote pessimistic attitude to fucking push myself up because the minute that you get satisfied, you're saying I'm okay with where I'm at. And that's not cool. That, that's not how you achieve yep. great success. And we've said it before. Like, look, dude, if you just want to get a pretty good job or whatever and do your thing, I admire that. Do what you want to do. But me and Ryan are trying to do something not very traditional. We're trying to become like multi-millionaire, massively successful. Like we're trying to do some fucking crazy shit. Yeah. So if that doesn't apply to you, okay, then don't take our advice. Mm-hmm. Like I don't give a fuck. It's, <laughs> you know? it's definitely a blessing and a curse for that mindset. Yeah. But that is that is like the right mindset in my mm-hmm. opinion, like from what I've seen. Uh, from other people but like for example right the no help video Mm -hmm. that we just put out Mm -hmm. go watch it no help yeah go watch it if you haven't watched it like five times share it with one friend etc um (laughs) up until like the day that we released it like the shooting process like we have refined and refined and refined and refined the day Mm -hmm. of we made sure we got everything we can do possible Mm -hmm. we still felt like we didn't get enough material Mm -hmm. like shooting wise the editing we still felt like there were things that could have been better like up until the day of like i went to joseph's house and like the the day before or two days before and i was like these small details we put it out and i'm still like not 100 percent satisfied with it but i think that like all the people who that i look up to like that's how they think like Mm -hmm. that's what i've kind of adopted and learned like there's like it's never 100 percent perfect Uh and there's always room for improvement um but the good thing about that is like that's only like within yourself to an extent because i think that like the average listener someone who wasn't there for the whole process doesn't know like the small details that you wanted so it's okay but you always gotta like as the artist or the manager or whatever you always gotta live with like watching that video knowing like 
oh, like we could have done this and that. Like, and, you know, and I think the biggest thing is, is your, is how you frame it to yourself. Yeah. So you can either take that pessimism and let it affect you in a healthy or an unhealthy way. There's two mm -hmm. ways to look at it. You can either say, fuck man, the video could have been so much better. Uh, and you let it ruin your day yeah. or you let it fuel your day yeah. or you wake up and say, okay, fuck this next video is going to blow no help out of the water. And I'm putting that out in the air right now. No help was probably one of the best videos that Ryan's done. The next one is going to sh make no help look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Like that's, that's how I want to operate. That's awesome. That, that's how you should operate. And if, saying if you it like that, now you have to. Now we have, yeah, we have yeah. to deliver. So I was like, "That's dope. That's dope." <laughs> we we just put it out there. So one thing Grant Cardone said in that book, Ten Times Rule. I don't know if oh, you, <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Um, he said in the book, I forgot what chapter, but he was like, "People say you gotta um under, what was it, uh, under um under promise and over deliver." He, I live by that motto, bro. Hey, but oh he says. God. That's actually not right. He's like, I don't live by that. Motto. <laughs> I, I hate that. But he's, motto. I, I was too. But then he said this, in a, and I was like, oh shit, okay. like that makes sense. He was like, you gotta over over promise and then over deliver, because now you now you just raise the bar even higher, uh, okay. and you over deliver, and it's like, damn, this dude's like fucking superhuman or something. Like, how the hell is he? How is his expectation so high, and he surpassed that? Mm. And I think those that that's how people like Michael Jordan and Michael Jackson, like the great, great, greats, like that's how they think. Like, that makes me nervous. That's scary, that though. That makes me nervous, dude. <laughs> that's like, scary. Like the the confidence that you gotta have to do some shit like that. I was just talking to Ryan today, and like I do, I'm 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 essentially self employed because I do freelance services through a platform. So I set my own prices and I do all that stuff. And I was talking to Ryan today about like clients and shit, <laughs> and um how I just haven't been feeling confident lately, even though I've like killed my past clients, which have been over 60 in the last two months. And I've been like killing it. I've been having this like trip lately and I haven't been feeling too confident. And it's, it's kind of from like, like what we're talking about. I, I haven't really been like, I've been afraid to, to, to even over deliver. Like I just, Oh, I'm like, can I do it? Oh, whatever. Feel, but, yeah. um, but I've never even heard that like over promise over deliver. So I get that. So, I mean, if you can visualize it, like success is like a staircase and not every single stair is even mm. right. You may walk up a couple, like when you first start trying to be a music manager and you're like, cool, man, I, you know, inst like I, I was on Instagram networking with people and like, I got Ryan some extra plays and then there's one step that's big as fuck. Mm -hmm. And like within that step is like, you need to, your confidence is going to raise all your network's going to build. All this shit is going to happen, but it's going to be like one of the hardest steps. Mm -hmm. And then you may have a couple other steps where you're like walking up the yep. stairs and then, and and it's constant. It's constantly trying to like raise what you can do and reach new heights, and it's never ending. Well, so you know a book I just finished that you read before me, the Compound Effect. Yes, I just got that yes. book and I finished it. Yes, and like speaking off the staircase shit, like the coolest thing I got from that book, what he said, what he he was like in the beginning, like yes, it's gonna be fucking hard and mm -hmm. like slow and shit. And, but once you kind of get a stride later on, like all those little skills and like knowledge and shit, like those shit, like those things all compound. So like in the future, like shit's going to be accelerating. Like just because it took five to 10 years to like get to a certain spot, doesn't mean it's going to take five to 10 years to get like exactly that same amount of effort. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it compounds and accelerates. And Andy Frisella said that too. Um, I think the book and the, the example in the book that the compound effect where he says, um, if you start with a penny every day and double it for like a month, I think it's like a common phrase, but like if you double yeah. it every month, you can end up with like $10 million or something like mm -hmm. that. Or it was like, exponential. Would you, it was like, would you rather take the $1 million today or double a penny every day for a month? Mm -hmm. And if you take the penny double every day for a month, you're going to get $10 million instead of 1 million. So it's like that patience, like yeah. long game shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you're, you're totally right about it getting easier. Like the first, <clears throat> okay. So let me think. So, so November, 2018 was when I registered the domain for density. Right. So, so, so prior to that, right. So d November, 2018, I, I got my Squarespace website for density prior to that. I think you and I were only working for like a little bit of 2018. I think 2017, mm, yeah. like we were tight. We were like becoming good friends again and shit. I think you were still in LA or you had just moved or whatever. 2018, whatever. Okay, so from t from November 2018 to November 
2019 uh-huh. was like all this shit happened. Like from from November 2019 to now, I've achieved like two or three times that. Yeah. I like st- I can straight yeah. up confidently fucking say that. Yeah. And now from November 2020 to 2021, I'm totally expect like I mean yep. th- like every day things are just continuing to get better like building relationships even in terms of we're figuring out ways to make money for mm-hmm. you as an artist which is like huge, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and all these things the music videos, everything. So I can I can attest to that as a person who's on an entrepreneurial journey. Things will compound, but it just takes fucking persistence, dude. Like everybody gives up and I've got some friends who like not everybody gives up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I mean, like, like, I mean that in terms of like, everybody wants to give up, you know, you know, but, but literally all that shit that you grow up hearing, (laughs) never give up, be persistent, be happy, uh, follow your dreams. All that shit is true. Dude. Cause like from what people have said and what I've seen, like if you don't give up, like if you never give up, you can't lose, like you're going to figure it out. Like you're going to figure it out somehow. You're going to learn every Mm -hmm. single day. You're going to learn what not to do. Mm-hmm. You're going to get skills that you didn't have. Like all these things you're going to get all, like you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's the main thing I always keep in mind too. Um, I saw this Grant Cardone on Instagram. Yeah, I, I saw like a clip today. He was like, never give up for two reasons. For one, um, you'll always regret it. Like what if I could, what if I could have done it? If mm-hmm. I just went a little harder, if I, if I stuck with it a little longer, what could have happened? And for two, then you're going to have to start over from, from zero again, doing something mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. And that scares the shit out of me. Cause like to get to this point, like yeah. that was like four or five years of yeah. like, like to learn how to write a song uh-huh. and to like learn how to sing mm-hmm. and learn how to, you know, all these things. Yeah. And to think about like, okay, starting a brand new endeavor from zero, like fuck that yeah. dude. Like yeah, dude. I'm not doing that. Here's, here's why people give up. <clears throat> They're impatient. I, th- I think that's the bottom line yeah. is because, and we, and once again, going back to social, social media, instant gratification, we are so used to yeah. getting things so quickly yeah. and tweeting and going on Facebook and you're like, Ugh, when you have all those notifications, you just fucking, you know, um, but yeah, we're, we're dropping gems today. Cause like one thing I heard, get one, <laughs> one we're just I, recycling what we read in books literally, and shit. Yeah. Literally, one thing Gary V said was he's like, all right. The only reason why you're impatient. The only reason why you're <laughs> impatient. Stop, stop, stop. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, the Shout only reason re- is it like whenever someone tries to talk to him, he just cuts them off and shit. <laughs> dude, dude, I get it. <laughs> but he says the only reason why you're impatient is not because you're not getting something fast enough. It's because you care what other people think mm. about your progress. Damn. And that's fucking true. Fuck yeah, it is. Because if I took away what what my high school friends and all these people thought about me looking at my Instagram page, my following and all that shit, bro, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm so happy with what we're doing. Like, we're we're going. Like, I know that we're on the right path. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. We're meeting new people. We're getting way fucking better. If you took away, like, what other people thought about it, like, I wouldn't even care about the followers and all that kind of shit. So... That hit me hard when he said that, yeah. for sure. Well, going back to the to, to the impatient thing, it's like, okay, yes, people giving a huge fuck about what others think is a big ass part of it, for it sure, is, and yeah. we all experience that. Yeah. Like that's just natural as humans. Yeah. Um. Okay. People give up because they're impatient, and people want things now. But here's what you got to understand. First off, I just want to say most people, you could look this up on the internet and fact check me. Most people don't earn their highest amount of income from a job until they're in their 40s. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people are willing to take, you know, that route and climb the corporate ladder and do that and earn and earn. And I don't think people are even realizing like, dude, you might, you might, I don't want to say peak because, you know, you can always continue to grow. But there are people who don't hit that million dollars that they wanted when they were 25, there are people that don't hit that till they're 70 yeah. and they cash out on their retirement or their IRA or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the same with music. Like, like, uh, you know, a reality for me and you is you might not become huge as fuck till you're 34. Mm-hmm. And, and that's yeah. a reality. You know? yeah. But the thing is, number one, going back to what you said, like we do not want to give up and then start another path on something else. Um, I think people just need to like look at the reality and understand, hey, this shit's going to take a while mm-hmm. and that's okay. Because regardless, it takes a long time. Like why do you think every time you go somewhere, it's like some 40-year-old or 30-year-old or 50-year-old person or whatever who's driving like the sick-ass car. When you see a young person driving like a 
Mercedes or whatever, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? I think that I think people should realize, like, dude, most people don't even earn the most amount of income till they're in their 40s. So like, mm -hmm. chill out. Things are gonna take a while. Like I realized that about a year ago. I was like, damn, you know, Ryan and I might not pop off for a while, dude. And I'm convinced that the longer that it takes, the longer you're gonna stay. Damn. Because with exceptions, you know, there's obviously Damn. exceptions to the rule and people blow up quick and they stick around and shit. Yeah. But for the most part, with any, not just music, but with any success, mm -hmm. I've I've noticed like the people who it took them the longest to, mm -hmm. to make it happen. They're the ones fucking dominating like in the long run. They Look learned at Jeff the game. Bezos, bro. Yes. Dude, he started Amazon yes. when? Like 96, I believe. 96? I think it was 96. Like, dude, yeah. do you realize how long that took? And, and... You can fact check me on this. Okay. I always say that. I, I did a report on Amazon for my capstone class before I graduated, um, but it was just some shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember a ton from it, but I think it took Amazon seven years until they, they were profitable, meaning that they were, they were um, uh, operating at a loss or operating in debt or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it until seven fucking years, dude. Wow. Seven years. Things are going to take time, guys. And now look at Jeff Bezos. He's, he's jacked Bezos now. The guy's fucking Shh. jacked beast also you know what dude i don't give a fuck what anyone thinks shout out amazon and shout out jeff bezos and that motherfucker deserves his money mm -hmm. okay so it is what it is mm -hmm. um side note i think he's worth like 100 billion hours or two was it 200 billion or is one well, or two well when you create a company that makes the lives of pretty much every other fucking person on earth better mm -hmm. that's what happens yeah and that's dope and i think he deserves it mm -hmm. so well now there's <laughs> now there's controversy that he's like wasn't treating his workers well. And I, dude, I don't know. Like, who knows? People can make it up. It could be true, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And hey, I'm sure that's a reality because guess what? When you run a company that has literally hundreds of thousands of employees, things are going to slip gonna through perfect. the cracks because humans are naturally, unfortunately, corrupt. Humans are selfish. That's why the government fucking sucks because it's just mass amounts of humans trying to run an organization. There's corruption in any industry. There's corruption in, in a lot of businesses. Unfortunately, I'm not saying that Amazon is corrupt, but the more people you bring into something, yeah. typically the worse it gets because it's easier for things to slip through the cracks. Like if I, I just don't think that Jeff Bezos has control over direct control over a mid-level manager at a at a at a factory a thousand miles away who's being an ass and does not know how to manage who was hired mm -hmm. by a guy who's yeah. never even met Jeff Bezos mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying but the reality is that the guy's running a multi-billion dollar company he doesn't have time to yeah to put someone like in like um at fault for something like that like yeah I don't know. Like, I don't know if he's directly like doing that kind of thing. You know, I, I, mean? I don't so. think I don't think Jeff Bezos is in Zoom meetings right now going, yeah, don't let people pee and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Now, it's fucked up that it happens. But here's the deal. As the leader, Jeff takes the blame. Yeah, that, as, that's, as that's the leader, the he takes the blame and that's yep. his responsibility. And yep. he's openly getting shit on my people. And it is what it is. And he just continues to do his thing and try to, you know, refine mm -hmm. his efforts and make them better and whatever. And that's what makes him a great leader and that's what makes people all all great leaders great is they yep. take the shit um scooter braun in an interview sa said that his dad told him i think his dad was like the coach of his soccer team or some shit like that um and scooter braun said that his dad told him son the wins are yours and the losses are mine mm. yeah and he wow. and he was like I, you know I, I may be butchering it but he was like as a leader that's what you do. Yeah. And, and, and also, that, that shit gives me chills. And bro. also I think a leader too, like they should be able to do the job of, of their employees. Sure. Yeah. As well as the employees or yes. better. Yeah, totally. You like, I don't think a leader or a CEO should be sitting on his desk, like with his feet up and shit, telling yeah. people what to do, but, and doesn't know how to That's not like, a real do leader. it. That's not a That's real not fucking a real leader. leader. That's why like, even like for me as an artist, I'm, I'm always striving like, okay, I'm going to help set up with all the chords and mm -hmm. shit, the show. I'm not some superstar that just watches everyone do the shit, mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. We set up our own stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, like I want to be a part of every single thing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm not, like, I think if our whole team is like that, which we are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then everything just flows nicely. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a great attitude. The ego set aside. Mm -hmm. And we all get along. And it's just like, it's fun, too. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So Totally. Totally. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know. But you got to know your role. Yeah. You know, that's a given sure. and everything. Like, you got to know your yeah. role. And obviously, like, as things get bigger, like when you're doing stadiums and stuff, like, you're I'm probably going to be setting up at four in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> man. Like, sorry. <laughs> you could. There's no doubt that you, you're you capable of doing that. Yeah. You know, but it's just you're not going <laughs> to. Yeah. Because you, you have your role to fulfill. Exactly. Everyone's okay. got their role. 
Um, man, we haven't even started the podcast yet. <laughs> like we I, haven't even started what I wanted to talk about. I mean, shit. I think we we got the topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Shit, man. We we just. I think the topic is like never give up. I think that's like. Yeah, that was a cool little spot. Yeah, for sure. I. And it's tough. Like, okay, well, here's one thing about giving up. Y- r- let's say that Ryan gets shit out of luck unfortunately uh-huh. it's something some freak accident happens whatever and you have to go out and get a 40 hour a week job at mcdonald's that's not you giving up on your music career yeah that's you doing what you got to do to survive yeah and if that means that you got to come that now you can only work on music for two hours a day instead of you know spending your whole day on it like you do now if that means that you can only spend two hours on your music so be it mm-hmm. yeah you're, you're still you're still operating at max capacity to the point where you're not you know doing it unhealthily or anything mm-hmm. um but just because you're doing what you got to do to survive and that's not directly related to what you're doing, that doesn't mean you gave up. Like, if anything, you could look at that as like, oh my gosh, Ryan just had a freak accident. The only way that he could continue to do music in the long run is if he got that 40-hour-a-week job. Let's get past this. <laughs> well, don't, no, don't manifest this. No, I'm not <laughs> manifesting kidding. it, but, but do you, like, do you no, get what I, I'm saying? I understand, yeah, no, yeah. 100%. So, no, you're so absolutely right. never think like, oh, man, you know, I need, I want to be a music artist, but I need money. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go out and get that 40 hour a week job. That doesn't mean you're giving up. It just means right now there's yeah. a particular decision that you have to make to support yourself and that's 100%. okay. And like, that's kind of, that's, that's like, everybody has to work. Mm-hmm. Everybody's yep. got to make money yep. and that's it, you know? So just uh, j- try to, dif- you know, differentiate giving up and doing what you got to do to survive because a lot of fucked up shit going on in the world right now. Everybody's on fucking unemployment and quarantine Dude, and all that. I, so, and I don't know about you, bro, but I just can't give up. Like, even if I tried, mm-hmm. like, cause I feel like even if times where I, things are so bad, like two years ago, things were super bad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think I might be done with this three days, three days later. I'm like picking it back up again. Uh, like, I just yeah. can't stay away from it. Like, I think it like takes act- it takes actual effort and energy to like give up. Like it's not just like a release and then And I, I think you gotta work to get into a position where like you can't give up. Like, dude, honestly, like you've built a team. Mm-hmm. We've built a oh, team. 100%. All this shit. I would shit let time. all like, you guys down. Like there shit. is so I wouldn't let you quit. Exactly. Yeah, I'd be like, bro, I'm, I'd be like, bro, I'm in this so much. Like, fuck you if you're gonna quit. You're yeah, not quitting. Up to you too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, no, yeah. we'd we'd square up if you quit. <laughs> 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 no, but like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, like. Like, if Jeff Bezos wanted to quit today, he couldn't. He couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That, if Andy Frisella wanted to quit, he couldn't. As, like, scary as it sounds, it's actually a good thing, though. It's a motivator. It's a motivator. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's a position you want to be in to where it's like, you, you can't get out of this now. You yeah. know? And I think confidence comes from that, too. Just knowing, like, yo, I'm really in this shit, and, like, mm-hmm. I have people around me who are in this with me, too. It's mm-hmm. like, that's, like, confidence right there in itself. Like, totally. And I think um, one thing, too, that you know, you can always take confidence in or have confidence in is you didn't give up. Totally. No matter what fucking totally. happens, no matter how things get, bad things get, you can always have that confidence knowing I'm still fucking doing this. Dude, like confidence. <laughs> we'll get into that. Guys, yeah. This is it. We're going to do like seven fucking episodes right now. Yeah. Confidence. We just talked about this right before. Is this the key to life. I'm, I'm yeah. literally not even kidding. Everything. Like you, confidence will land you a job interview and it will land you a job. Confidence will, will, will get you the girl. It will get you the girl. It will instill <laughs> leadership in you. You need to trust yourself and trust your gut and be confident. Okay. I'm a, I'm a straight up say it yesterday. So we were like, I was having a good day. Cause I was like, you know, spitting game with this girl or whatever. And I felt really confident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I felt really confident. So then me and my friends went out to eat and afterwards and this waitress, like she was super beautiful. I was like, you know what, dude, I'm going to talk to this girl and I'm going to try to get her number or whatever. So I was like super cordial and everything. And we were just like all having a good time and mm-hmm. we had dinner and stuff. And then afterwards I went into the restaurant and I was like talking to her for a second and let me back it up real quick. Yeah. Prior to walking in there, I was like, okay, I have a goal. I'm going to get this girl's number and I'm going to just be as confident as I can and totally be myself. And I knew that the 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 feeling of never knowing what she would have mm-hmm. said would have been a fucking thousand times worse than a no. Yep. And I got a no. I got a no. And it, was, it wasn't a big deal. No, not really because yeah. I just kept, I stayed confident. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, that doesn't mean that I'm even, you know, even if she thinks I'm ugly or whatever, like that doesn't mean that I'm ugly. That doesn't mean that I smell or that like I'm mm-hmm. stupid or that like I'm a bitch or whatever, dude. Like I just stayed, I stayed confident. I walked out of yeah. there and I was kind of smooth with it. 
I tried to be. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's listening like, fool, get your ass out of here. No, but I was like, I was just totally cool about it, confident. And I was like, yeah, like, let's get to know each other, whatever. Let me take down your number. She was like, sorry, but I'm seeing someone. And I was like, yeah. oh, we're all seeing someone, aren't we? Huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I was like, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then I just, we talked for a minute and then I, I just like, uh, you know, in a nice way, I was like, all right, Hey, you have a good night. And I walked Mm -hmm. away and I just kept my head up and kept walking. And like, that was it. And I'm not going to let that affect me tomorrow or when I talk to another girl or anything like that, I'm going to maintain that confidence. And I think that like, we always talk about this too. Um, (laughs) love how we're getting to this. Um, we we've had things in the past where we didn't do something like with the girl, like made a move on a girl we were talking Uh to or liked, or we didn't go up to the girl we thought was hot. And we had that shit shitty ass feeling ah! of regret that is the worst i went home feeling. and punched my pillow like seven times <laughs> no i'm just Literally. kidding like i think i was like in ninth grade ninth grade yeah freshman year of high school uh-huh. i was with this girl and i really liked her so much and we we're talking and stuff so she was super into me um and then we got to a, a point where <laughs> Like, I was set up to, like, hook up with her, right? Uh, and she was, like, ready and everything, and I bitched out. Ryan! <laughs> but, <Duh>! but <laughs> Every... Duh! Here's the thing, though. I'm glad it happened, because I never let it happen you again. What? Whenever the, oh, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever an yeah. opportunity came, I always thought about that and that feeling of regret. So, it, like, it never... Like, I never um, Bro. bitched out again. Bro. Yeah, we've talked about this. Okay. Yes. If, if you don't do something that you know in your heart you want to do, whether it's talking to a girl, whether it's going up to that person who you want to network with, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, raising your hand in front of the class, like anything, like, dude, when you feel a feeling so fucking shitty that is regret, it will it will force you to never act that way again. Like, mm-hmm. like you with that girl, like, bro, I had a similar situation like 30,000 times in my fucking adult life yeah. where I wanted to talk to a girl and, and, you know, like, at, like, I'm sure, you know, as men, like it, there's kind of like a societal pressure too, in my opinion. And I'll straight say that, like, as a guy mm-hmm. that, that, that I feel, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of guys can agree with this, that we need to make a move or we need to talk mm-hmm. to a girl that is perpetuated by males and mm-hmm. females yep. in my experience is perpetuated mm-hmm. by a lot of different people, not everyone, but lots of different people of all types. So I will say that there were times where I felt like I should have walked up to someone or something. Um, but I also wanted to do it on my own. Like I was just like, mm-hmm. yo, this girl's cute. I'm gonna go talk to her or whatever. There have probably been a handful of times where I wanted to and I never did shit. Mm-hmm. And then to this day, I'm like, fuck, dude. Like what could have happened? I should have done that, yep. whatever. Now, and I had a really bad one like a couple you know, months ago before uh, quarantine or whatever. I went home. I was like, fuck. So anytime that I feel like, you know what? I want to talk to this girl. I do it. Yeah. And guess what? I get rejected 90% of the time, but at least I know. Yeah, but everyone does. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's a numbers game. Um, but at least <laughs> I know <laughs> that that I had the confidence. I went up and did it and I feel great. Like that rejection last night, you know, quote unquote rejection. I felt phenomenal walking yeah. out of there because I was like, I'm a fucking beast. I went up and did it anyway. You know what's funny? Honestly, I'm glad we're talking about this because I think a lot of guys don't talk about this shit. Yeah, like, for sure. It's for very sure. private because yeah. you don't want to come off like a bitch. Well, yeah, dude. quote unquote, as we'll call it. No, that's a, no fuck a quote unquote. But, that's what that shit is but called. Literally, but literally, they literally, call it. You get called a bitch. But literally, it's funny because I think that sometimes talking to a girl you're into uh. can be a lot harder than doing like the shit we do. Like for example, right? I, <laughs> I've talked to like people who I look up to like heavily. And, oh yeah, and it's way easier. Even though, like, I've grown up watching them, or uh, like, uh-huh. like Tish Taylor, right? Yeah, we just yeah. had a chat with her, uh-huh. and like, she's like high up in the fucking industry. Yeah, and like, but talking to her, it was like we were confident about it, and it yeah. was cool. I've talked to um, Pooh Bear at the Chris Brown concert yeah, that one yeah, time, yeah. and I was not nervous. Like, uh-huh. and I look up to him a lot as a songwriter. Yeah. Um, so like a lot of different situations and shit, but. So it's funny because like talking to a growing up to a chick yeah. like is like a whole another experience it is a it different is. part of your brain if i saw scooter brown on the streets and and it was in like a yeah. pocket where i could respectfully like talk to him like he wasn't with his yeah. kids or so, you know what i'm saying like i could respectfully go up and like try to network and talk to him i would be like fuck yeah baby let me go talk to this guy and see what's good if i see a bomb girl on the street who is like my dream girl and i want to get to know her personality <laughs> i will go and I will sit there and be like, fuck, should I do it? Should I do it? Yep. And then the little Jacob on my shoulder who's like all buffish, he's like, yeah, don't, don't be a bitch. Go get that. And then the other Jacob who like, who's all clean cut is like, Jacob, hey man, 
I don't know if you should do this, bro. Yeah. You should be a little, think, think about this. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm just like getting pulled both directions yeah. or whatever. Uh, that's so true. And all that's you, so true. and all the guys watching who, who are telling themselves right now, like, it's not even the hard, like you were, you were lying yeah. because it is hard for everybody. I don't yeah. care how many girls you've talked to. Well, or well, whatever. For, for some girls, what? Like not every girl. I'm just saying like, we've all had that experience. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. It's not like someone's like a guy's born and like, he's never felt like that talking to going yeah. up to a chick. Like there's only one Jacob. Moore. Huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like it's, it's hard. It's, it's not easy. No. Yeah. It's not easy, but yeah, totally. that's another challenge that. It is. You know, and if you, if you can get, see the hardest, the hardest thing to have confidence in is like working with others, mm -hmm. talking to a girl that I classify that as like working with another person, mm -hmm. trying to do something, networking, whatever. That's like the hardest shit to have confidence in. Like, mm -hmm. and if you can get to that level to where you could talk to anybody, like, like super hot girl, uh, uh, you know, business person, mm -hmm. uh, person in your industry, favorite music artist, you see them out on the streets or whatever. Like if you can get over that hump and be able to socialize confidently with anybody oh my god yeah you are you are golden yeah. like it, it, yeah. that but that, even that then, is invaluable I, but even then i still think there's still like nervous times and shit i don't think everyone does totally. not feel like that you know? yeah it's never going to be 100 percent perfect yeah. totally for sure yeah that's man hey shout out all the boys listening all the boys and that, now that all the girls are gone i'm just kidding okay so now that all the girls <laughs> the are <TikToks>. gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean tiktok yeah no. yeah <laughs> yeah i'm on tiktok now we're on triller triller that's what that's fucking hilarious but i mean i would like to hear because what like like i said it, that that pressure of feeling like you need like like fuck okay i gotta go talk to this chick because she ain't gonna talk to me yeah that i i like i said i think that's perpetuated by men and women and people of all types like everywhere not everybody but you know it, it doesn't discriminate like I think society perpetuates that and, and puts that on guys to go and talk to girls and, and be a leader and do shit like that. But I mean, I guess from a girl's perspective, like if you're a girl listening to this, um, like is that, you know, is that our, our role? Should we even do that? Cause, cause I'm gonna be straight up in yeah. my experience. Like girls don't come up to me and I've, I have lots of guy friends and uh, I mean, some girls have come up to me and talked to me like, and talk to you like, no, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm saying that genuinely like, you like, mean, it like for the purpose of like hitting on you though. Is yeah, what, is, you, you mean, I've okay. had like one and a half girls do that my whole life. Okay, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. But um, I just feel like it's more of a guy thing. Like society has just molded that. It, it, it's a guy thing, and I've even talked to girls too. Like I have a lot of female friends who are great women, and I've asked them like, should the guy go up to the girl? And they're like, yeah, we like girls like when guys are confident like that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, um, okay. I don't know, dude. I, I all I Maybe know is just like, where we all, live. All I know I is know. the times like that I've I've like told like a, a friend, like girl of mine, of like you should go up to that guy if you think he's here or whatever. They're like, oh, I can't do. It. I just can't do it. Like it's mm -hmm. I was too. Like I've never seen it. Like I've never seen it happen in front of my eyes. Like I don't yeah. know. That's so, that's like a rare occurrence at the bar. If I see a girl walk up to a guy, me and the boys are like, a female walks up to the male at the bar. <laughs> this is quite a rare instance. Let's see how the male Chad reacts. <laughs> Yo, Derek, let's get a couple shots of Red Bull vodka, dude. And the girl's like, um, excuse me. And me and Ryan are watching from afar. Like, a girl just went up to that guy. The oh chemical reaction. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the TV, you just see, like, the, like the, the lines of, like, the chemicals, like, going through their brains and shit. <laughs> Hers dude. turns red and shit. <laughs> dude, I miss going out to bars. Dude, me too. And not even, like, I, like I'm not a drinker. Like, like I go out and have a beer, but like, I don't really, I feel like we're social, like social drinkers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. a social drinker. Like people hit me up to get a beer. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go have one. Let's go have a cold one with the bros. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but God, I just miss like socializing and like people would hit me up like, yo, come to DTF. We're here and we're just going to fuck off for like an hour. It's like, okay, yeah, let's just go hang out and socialize. And it's mm -hmm. just a cool scene and it gets your blood flowing. And it's like, there's people and you're like hyped to just socialize and like be a human. And now it's like, I'm sitting in this RV with this fucker all day and just <laughs> <laughs> you know? staring at phones and microphones. Oh and shit. Gosh. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting we're being watched. Oh my That's true. There's even someone watching yeah. right there. Dude, my Chinese TikTok agent, <laughs> my Chinese TikTok FBI agent probably sees how many times I'm staring at my phone, like scrolling through Instagram all day. Gosh. Like, look at Jacob's double chin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> For real. That's funny. Man. Um, dude, that was great. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I definitely want to get some, some more guests on here. I, ha I have like two mm -hmm. or three people in mind. Cool. Um, of who I want to bring on here and shit. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Can we make a formal announcement? I, I, if people are still listening, 
Can we make a formal? Ryan Ramirez has a tattoo. Oh shit! Flex that shit. Flex that shit, baby. What's it say? XXX. It says double R. It says double R. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. So now that you guys know how s- how special this shit means to me, you guys better go stream my album. How special it means to you. <laughs> what? How much? I'm sorry. How much it means to me? How special it is to me? Y'all better go stream that that EP now. That mixtape. Yeah. It's a mixtape EP album. It's all of it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let, let's brand it. What is? Yeah. It? Well, what are we gonna brand it? Um, it's an EP. It's an EP. It's an EP. But um, are you gonna after part two comes out put part two next to it on your tattoo? <laughs> part one. Part or one or part, or part two. two. Yeah. I'm gonna put deluxe. A deluxe double R deluxe. Um, but yeah, no, I just it felt right. It felt like um, that's kind of like the. I don't know what you call it, like not a stage name, but like a secondary name, like an artist name. Mm. Like Chris Brown has Breezy. Um, double R. Double R. Double R you know cool. what I'm saying? Like, so shout out AJ on the beat too. Um, he's the one who thought of that a long time ago. Double R. Like, you should go by Double R. I was like, that's kind of hard. It's fire. Shout out. I would love to get AJ on this dude. We could even Zoom with him. Oh, yeah, that's right. We yeah, could yeah. Zoom. We can. Man. Or just a phone call or whatever it you're, is. You're in it for life, bro. For real. That's a trip. For real. That's a trip, man. And now I can't ever give up. No. Ever. Good shit, guy. Cool. What's in your mind for you and for I? I'm trying to decide from the look in your eyes, yeah, yeah. I mean, besides, but your feelings inside you. I'm pushing up my mind and my spirit.